Hello. Hello. Welcome to Monday, Monday with, with the, the Baby. Babies. You know, one of these days she looks at me and then I look at her <laughs> and then we go back through and I'm like every time. Real quick, um, today we are talking about the basics. Going back to the basics. What are macros? How do you track them? What do we do here? All the things. Why do we track them? Why do we like to use a reverse? When is a cut necessary? Does what you eat actually matter if you're hitting your macros? All the things. Yeah, that's what I said. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> she, hey guys, she's extra spicy today. I, I, so just it started out that way, like from the get go. Oh man, I yeah. like it. I like it when she's extra spicy. Yeah, I saw her um, first thing this morning and I couldn't, story time. <laughs> oh yeah, let's start there. Okay, so, ahead, so we do an early morning class together I was going to say 5.30. It used to be 5.30. 6 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Thursday mornings. So I come out. First of all, she texts me this morning. It's at our farm. I, but um, I teach on Mondays. Yeah, so she teaches on Mondays, and she texts me, and she's like, I can't find it. Oh, she's like, you have a broken sprinkler. I was like, well, she okay. did. She had a broken sp sprinkler which, that was like pooling water. Which anyway. I really appreciate. And then she's like, I can't find the whiteboard. And so <laughs> I was like, it's out at the pavilion. She's like, no, it's not. And I was like, okay, I'll bring one out. But I didn't want to erase what I had on it. So <laughs> so I come out and, and I was like, I start to go. She's like, it's not there. So I start to go to the gym. She's like, it's not there. So I was like, okay, I know it is, but I'm just going to let it, it go. Wasn't, it wasn't. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> she, and so then I get my one from the house. We erase it and I walk out there to blow the mats off and there it is. She's gonna right say there. like it's sitting right out in the open and it wasn't sitting out in the open. It was upside down. It was, it was upside down. Flipped upside down. It didn't I So yeah. she gets it on there and then we get ready to do our warm up run and she steps <gasps> in the puddle of water with her nice shoes and she's like yeah! and, and it fully like got my feet wet. Anyway. So that's how she started her Monday, but it's it's been a good Monday. It has been a great Monday, and I set my intention after the workout. Yep. We had a great workout. I set my intention for the week, which was really good. It was spent some time being grateful for all the good things in my life, and here we are. But I might just be a little extra sassy. It's I like it when she's <laughs> spicy. I was going to say, oh, oh, another thing before oh. we jump into the content. Um, so every week we create a thumbnail for our live <laughs> this week. Um, so when every time, so just so you guys know, I am married and have a wonderful husband and family. She's married and has a wonderful husband and family. But every time we have our pictures taken, it's kind of like a, um, like a wedding shoot <laughs> or like a prom or like a couple. Yeah. Anyway, like we very couples much shoot. look like we're in love because we are yeah, we in love. love each other. Yeah. And very today important. we used one where she's sitting on my lap. She's like, oh, I love this picture. She's like, I don't think we've used this before. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, am I sitting on your lap? She's like, yeah, I think so. I was like, all right, great. Yeah. So we have some, we have a bunch of funny ones that are like, we're just like peering it. And her husband's the one that takes most of our photos. So it's just funny. Yeah, it's just That's how it all. is. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you Let's are just in. joining us, if you have questions along the way, if you have anything to add, please always feel free to pop it into the comment box and we will do our best to pay attention to those. Um, after the fact, if you're watching this and you have questions, you can always comment here. You can DM us. You can head over to our website and message us. Anything that works. We're so excited to talk about what we are most passionate about today. Well, one of the things we're most <laughs> passionate about today. Yeah, we, you know... We use this Instagram and Facebook Live as a spot to, you know, chat about different topics, not necessarily really macro focused, but more nutrition, whole body wellness, all of the things. And today we are going to really get down into the nuts and bolts of actually what we do, which is tracking macros, um, coaching clients through a macro program that we love, we believe in, um, that has been proven over and over again to get our clients uh, the results that they want. So that's what we're talking about today. Hope you're interested in it. And... Let's get to it. Let's get to it. First of all, why macros? Wait, first of all. <laughs> yeah. First of all, what are macros? Like, what are they? What are they? What are they? <laughs> what are what they? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so there's macronutrients and there's micronutrients. The micronutrients are important, but we really look at macronutrients because, and I'll say what they are, but because, and we're going to get a lot more into this, when you start to understand for your bio individuality, meaning how you're personally made up, what your cellular structure looks like, how active you are, um, the stressors you have on your body, your individual gut makeup, yeah, your, your genetic sleep, makeup, yeah, all the things, we all need something a little bit different. And when you can find how to appropriately fuel your body and your brain, it is magic. 
every single person in this world needs to understand this and we would have such a better world. And okay, so we're gonna get into that. But first of all, what are macros? Really, we look at the four primary macronutrients, which are going to be water, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Um, we also do start to look at some of the micronutrients, but if you're just looking at what are macros, why is it important, every body needs a little bit different breakdown and most people have no idea what they're ingesting and how it's affecting their body. Yeah, and I think a lot of that comes from too, most people don't realize like how much energy their body exerts, <clears throat> excuse me, in a, any given day. And so there's lots of different ways to measure that. And it's all interrelated, you know, the amount of energy that you exert during a day all correlates to how your metabolism is going to work for you and also how much um, of those macronutrients your body needs. So we take all of that into consideration and there's a lot to it, so. And you guys, this is coming from um, both of us. Like we're, I, we're both in our 40s, we've done all the things, we have kids, we have super busy lifestyles, um, we've faced health hurdles, um, and you know, I've been around nutrition and overseeing nutrition programs for a long time. Um, Haley has lived a life of pursuing uh, fitness and nutritional wellness, and we literally have done, I can't say all the things because I, I don't know. There's well, there's new things, things there. every yeah. single day to do and try. and. But we followed a non-inflammatory protocol, which I still very much believe in. But I think that like the next best thing is macros. And we'll get into that. We've done Whole30. Ooh, the couple. We've Those done paleo. Mm -hmm. We've done keto. We've done, and we've done it all. And the thing is, is that any one thing for a season, if you are consistent, will likely yield some results. Yeah. However, I think the clencher is, is it sustainable? Do you feel deprived? And is it, in addition to providing aesthetic results, is it moving you towards a healthier person? And how hard is it? Because it doesn't have to be that hard. No. And our goal through all of this is to create a program Oh, my legs are sticking together. <laughs> um, it's to create a program that is sustainable in the long term. So we want our clients, when they're done with us, we want them to go forth and prosper and yeah. to be able to, you know, be successful and to set new goals and be able to achieve those goals by, you know, incorporating the things that they've learned with us. So I just had two really incredible clients graduate this weekend and what I mean by graduate is they're graduating into maintenance. So they're now, they've reached their goals. Actually, both of them have surpassed their goals, which is so exciting. Um, they're feeling really good. They're feeling really comfortable tackling it on their own. And they're going into what's called a more flexible maintenance. So they don't have to track with as much specificity, but they really understand how to fuel their body and they can maintain their results and they have the tools they need if they want to in the future go through any type of like mini cut or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And they both just feel like it's literally been life changing and it has, it was for us. And that's why, that's why we we're started doing macro this. Mavens. Yeah. Not just the aesthetic part. Cause I will say my first relationship with macros was for the aesthetics. I was frustrated that I was killing myself in the gym and eating what I thought was really clean and not getting the aesthetic outcomes I wanted. What I didn't fully understand, which I should have, understanding the body, is what a difference it would make for my natural hormone harmony, my ability to sleep, my consistent energy levels, all the other goodness that comes from it, which I think are like it's so exciting for us because our clients are constantly telling us like wow these other things now i'm feeling so much better my relationship with food has improved all the things and that's where we feel like we have this small ability to well, a big ability but to really inflict change and impact and like that we get to be a part of that in people's life that then snowballs to other areas of their life is like so satisfying yeah it really is that's yeah that's actually my favorite. In fact, we posted, um, I think it was, maybe it was last Can week. Can you like see my legs on this one? <laughs> Sorry. Look out. She's going to go get a blanket in a Well, minute. no, because like, on, you know, I don't want, it's a weird, it's a weird thing I have when like the Nobody's camera's right there. Up your I know. Shorts. All right. Anyway. Of course they're not. And if, they, and if they are, like, we don't know. I don't know. <laughs> have at it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, I think it was a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, we posted a um, a transformation of a former client of mine who is, she's in maintenance, she's doing her own, um, she's tracking herself now, you know, she comes to me every once in a while for questions or whatnot, but very rarely, and she is 
killing it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so she cool is actually like killing it. Yeah. Like she's amazing. She and so it, that's what we want for our clients. We want them to come to us, get all of the education, the learning, all the things that they need. And then we want them to launch and we want them to be able to have this new sustainable lifestyle and implement the tools that they have learned with us to get them to their next goals. And it's just, it's so cool, you guys. That's our favorite. And we're gonna get into the nitty gritty, but I just wanna talk conceptually for a minute about why it's important. Like, why macros? Why can somebody be working out really hard? Not all, not all of our clients work out, and that's okay too. But why can somebody be pushing themselves, um, let's say in the gym, and eating what they would consider pretty clean and, and fairly well portioned and not be getting the results? Let me just give you a couple examples. If you are under eating protein, your body does not have the ability to support and protect your muscle mass and or gain any muscle. And muscle super thermogenic, meaning it burns more calories, it protects your bones, it helps with longevity. There are so many reasons for muscle. If you are under eating your fats, it's a little bit different for men and women, let's just talk about women. If you are under eating your fats, you are not appropriately supporting your natural hormone production. And that can lead to a number of things, um, a number of things, PCOS, um, it, from a thyroid perspective, you can you know, ha be hypothyroid. There's, there's so many things why fat is important for your endocrine system, especially. And also we need a certain amount of fat in order to absorb certain vitamins. There are certain vitamins that you can take a supplement and if you're not getting enough fat to actually move that vitamin into your body where it needs to go, then you might as well just not even be taking the supplement. It's called a fat soluble vitamin. vitamin. Yeah, A-D-K, um, A-D-E-K. And then if you are under eating carbohydrates, depending on your activity level and the type of carbohydrates you're getting, you probably are not producing the adequate amount of energy and endurance output to potentially be fueling some of the things that you want to do. All three macronutrients, and we just touched on those three, also have a profound impact on your immune system, your endocrine system, your cognition, and all of your organs. And so, yes, like if you just want to simplify it, if if you want to strictly just focus on hydrating your body, getting sunshine, focusing on sleep, and eating a whole food diet, so a non-inflammatory whole food diet, so eliminating or minimizing grains, dairy, and sugar, which you can also look at staying the perimeter of the grocery store and or foods from the ground, foods that walk around, foods from the sea, and foods from the air. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know we were going to do motions to that. That was new. <laughs> then you'll still be a step up. Like you're working yeah. towards great health. That's fantastic. But if you can then on top of that, figure out how and what your body needs and just start creating small habits in your life to make sure those needs are met, like you will exponentially fast forward your progress. Yeah. But you have to work. So yeah. we're not saying like join our program and then you don't have work to do. Mm -hmm. Like the effort is where the change happens. So, and that's true in life, right? Let's yeah. say you want to go on vacation. Um, well, you can't just like up and go on vacation. There's planning that has to happen. There's effort that you have to put forth in order to achieve the goals that you want. So let's say a, a lot, a large majority of the people who sign up for our program, their first goal is weight loss or aesthetic goals um, or performance. But you have to have you have to be willing to put forth the effort to move towards that goals. I have a, I, this is the second time I've talked about it today, actually. Yeah. And I think it's really important. And so you, we can all say like, oh, I'm a very intuitive eater and that works for me. But let me tell you, like if you live in America, like eating intuitively is not easy. Like, <laughs> like our, our world, our culture wants us to be big. Like that's just what it is. Wants us to be bigger than our natural bodies. It's too easy. There's too much... There's too much processed food. It's too easy to go out and to overindulge Seed or underindulge. And sugar I mean, it's and just like, blah, blah, blah. it's crazy. And so, like, even if you think that, like, oh, well, I can eat intuitively and still reach my reach your goals, more power to you if that's what you want to do. But, like, there has to be action behind the goal. Mm -hmm. So, if your goal is to lose 10 pounds, 5 pounds, to put on more muscle. 50 pounds. Yeah, to put on more muscle to, um, to improve your mile time. 
all of those things, there has to be action behind yeah. it in order to get you there. And if you're not willing to put forth the action behind it, well, then that goal must not be that important to you. So anyway, I think it's a really important to like kind of assess the whole picture. You know, like I have certain nutri or certain you know, aesthetic goals, which are totally fine. I also want to be able to do a bunch of unassisted pull-ups in the gym, you know? Well, I can't do that if I'm not willing to put forward the action ahead of it to yeah. get there, so. Well, and I think that then a lot of people go to the next thing, which I used to also, and there's still some merit to this for sure, but I want to, I want to break down why this isn't always the case uh, from a black and white perspective, and that is calories in, calories out. In theory, and even even scientifically, if you are burning more calories than you're taking in, technically you should be losing mass, right? Because you're burning more than you're ingesting. However, we find time and time again that people will put themselves, whether they're aware of it or not, in a deficit. They are under eating calorically for what their body needs for a sustained period of time, and then they start to experience what we call metabolic adaptation. I really like that word, adaptation. There's a lot of syllables to that word. Yeah, I like so. But in a really simple, like metabolic adaptation, our bodies are real smart. We talk about mm -hmm. it all the time. If you are living in a deficit, which a lot of people are and they don't even know it, first of all, a couple things happen that you don't even realize. And this has been studied. I actually, I, I, sh I should look for the study and pull it up. but. When you have, when you're in a calorie deficit, your body, whether you like it or not, automatically down regulates its movement. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a fidgeter, maybe you bounce your leg all the time, if you put yourself in a deficit, a lot of those extra movements just go away. And those are calorie burners. Yeah. All the little stuff that, that we don't even know is happening, non-exercise movement is all burning calories. And as we put ourselves in a deficit, it goes away. That's why like tracking your steps is really important because yeah. you can kind of play the game of like, I'm in a calorie deficit for a small season to reach certain goals. I'm going to you know make sure that I keep my step count at 10,000 or 15 or whatever it is for you um, to kind of compensate for the lack of movement that your body is naturally doing to preserve itself yeah. right and so that's part of it but then along with that your metabolism also down regulates it's like I'm only getting X amount of calories well then we're gonna slow down this body movement we're gonna you know we're gonna do different things to different parts of the body so that the metabolism doesn't have to work so hard because it's wanting more energy and if we don't give it the energy that it needs then it's going to really start slowing down it's kind of like is it I think it's, it's frogs cool. <laughs> That's not what you were gonna say. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but frogs, like in, I in my house, we have a giant pond, and there's bullfrogs like crazy. They're so fun. And they, in the winter, they burrow, they bury themselves in the mud, and they slow their bodies down. So their metabolism goes down, their heart rates, all of it really down regulates so that they can survive through the winter before they come back out. It's kind of what your body does when you put it through a deficit and you're not fueling it properly and you're still like charging, charging, charging. Your body's going to be like, whoa, it is time to like sit back. I'm going to slow down and relax. And then that's when oftentimes we'll have clients who come in who have been in a deficit for far too long. Because yes, a deficit is needed to reach goals at some point for a very small amount of time yeah. that is regulated and help you know and that you're coached through and that's what we're here for anyway people come to us who have been in a deficit for years and years and years and their body and their metabolism has completely adapted to these low calories and they cannot lose weight because honestly like who can live off of like four or five hundred calories a day What's amazing is people do yeah. and they gain weight because their body's like, I need to gobble up all of this energy, all of these calories, and I'm going to store it because we're starving. And it's and it's it's crazy what happens, but we do we get clients in frequently who have been under eating for years and years, and they can't even believe that as soon as we give them more calories and get them moving, that all of a sudden like they have energy, they become vibrant and alive, and they awesome. feel amazing, and the weight comes off. Yeah, and I mean just to piggyback on that, because when you're at a low calorie volume for any significant period of time. Like what Haley was saying, our bodies go into starvation mode. So they start breaking down important muscles, tissues, all of the things to utilize. And that's why it's really hard to sustain any form of muscle mass, which is really important for our longevity. The other piece of that is even though maybe people don't identify it with what we commonly think of from a binge eating standpoint, if you're consistently, and we see this all the time, 
eating pretty low calories throughout the week, your body expects that's what's coming. And so that's what it's operating off of. And then on the weekend, they might, you know, go have drinks, go out, have burgers, have pizza, have whatever, which you can have those things, but then it's gonna spike. Your body's not gonna do know what to do with that extra and that's why it's then storing that. Mm -hmm. And so just the simple act of consistently fueling your body in itself can be huge, but that's where we come in. And not everybody that starts with us is under eating. It's, a, it's all over the board, but I will tell you, we talk about bio-individuality and it's so true. Like we can have a relatively petite, um, let's just say, uh, you know, five, three, 120 year old or 120 wow. pound female <laughs> that comes to us already eating somewhere between 1800 and 2400 calories and they're fairly fueled. And then we can have a, you know, 215 pound female similar in age similar in height that comes to us only eating around a thousand calories chances are they probably are having spikes you know on certain days in their storing but their body has completely down regulated their hormones are not functioning properly their metabolism is tanked and so it you know yes calories in calories out for sure scientifically has been proven but that only is step one there are so many other parameters that go into that and that's why we really look at how can we consistently fuel your body and your brain how can we work with you your bio individuality and your metabolism to really get it to rev to its optimal rate and then and only then strategically use a cut if needed well and i think also the magic in that if you are in a macro plan the calories in, calories out. You know, we do this strategic reverse where we climb you and climb you and climb you in calories until we get you to a certain threshold. And then we go through a very prescribed cut. Mm -hmm. And that oftentimes in the cut is where the magic happens. And that's really where the calories in, calories out. If you are consistent yes. with your nutrition over time to get you to a certain point, and maybe we hang out in maintenance for a long time. It, it's all very individual. And then we do a prescribed cut. Then those calories in, calories out, is like you'll see it it's yeah. it's crazy it's yeah. magic because your body is burning let's say 2,000 calories but you're only eating you know 1600 or whatever those numbers look like and then it's really really abundant yeah. what your body can do it's cool I love it so let's talk about that and if you guys once again if you guys have questions along the way at all absolutely feel free to put them in the comment box or you can send us a private message too um, but let's talk about what we call our reverse process um, now everybody comes to us in a slightly different place most of the time people are coming to us wanting to make significant body composition shifts some of the time people are coming to us for just performance sometimes it's for muscle building um, sometimes it's just for health um, and all of those things can be achieved similarly similarly but differently yeah <laughs> um, and so most of the time we are going to start a client and what Haley referenced as a reverse like what does that mean basically when a client first starts with us the like they fill out a, a consult that's going to give us a lot of information on their activity level on any medications they might be taking on their their history kind of all of those pieces we know their age their height their goals all of those things then we're going to have them track their food, anything with calories, food, drink, um, for roughly a week. And that gives us a really good baseline as to, and, and that in itself can be really revealing to our clients mm -hmm. because oftentimes they just have no idea. And so that can be really revealing and we, we can look at on average, it's different every day for most people, but on average, what are your, what's your average calorie consumption? What's your average um, grams of protein, carbs, and fat per day? Then we look at their goals and we figure out where to start them. And we look at their activity level and how much they <laughs> exercise and what they do for exercise. It's not just like, oh, these are the numbers and we spit out some, what, some type of assignment. It's not like that. It is very specific to each individual person based on all of their things, how old they are, how tall they are, how much they weigh, how much they exercise. You know, we look at a broad scope of information before we just give somebody some random numbers. And, and we don't ever give anybody random numbers. No, <laughs> sorry, that came out wrong. Well, and before the other we give thing, them a very specific assignment for their bio individuality. Look at you go. I like. I like that. I term. can say smart words sometimes. You do. You are smart. No. She's real smart. Sometimes it doesn't she come educated. out. She's <laughs> educated. <laughs> um, okay, so the other thing that I just want to touch on, and 
I still think that there can be merit to doing this. It's just not optimal. And that is a lot of people will go, let's say just on the MyFitnessPal and they'll get a macro, a one-time macro calculation, or they'll pay to have a one-time macro calculation. And anything is better than nothing. So doing something consistently for a season is still good. However, if you stay at that, if you just do a one-time calculation, First and foremost, let's say that you started and one of your goals is to build muscle mass and you want to shed fat, build muscle mass. But let's say that you are 150 pounds and when you first come to us, you're only eating 90 grams of protein on average per day. Well, if you're looking to build muscle and we're only giving you a one-time assignment or you're getting that online, and let's say then your protein should be somewhere between 0.7 and 1.25 around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. We cannot, we should not, you should not. Nobody should. Nobody should take your protein from 90 to 150 overnight or you will have significant gut disturbance. Oh my gosh. Not to mention how you'd have to shift your other macros and how calories play into that. So once not again, to mention, it's not easy to like increase your protein that much. Like No, and that's why we slow roll and that's why we're strategic and that's why we shift things over time. So. In our opinion, yes, there still can be benefit from a one-time macro assignment, but depending on the goals of the client, which most of the time has changed, not just maintenance. If you're coming in for maintenance, that's great. If I still think that there can be merit in doing something for a season to really get used to it before going through a reverse, and that's something, because we have a lot of people ask us for one-time assignments, and we haven't done that because we don't think it's optimal. We are talking through a future group coaching option that would give that, but that would then graduate into one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, however, Starting with a reverse really allows us to figure out the needs of the client and the individual where they're starting and helps us slowly take them to where they need to be while repairing the metabolism. And we'll talk about how that happens and making sure that they're getting adequate fat for hormone um, support and production, adequate carbohydrates for their activity level, adequate protein for their goals and for muscle protection and building and allows us to then get that metabolism to rev with a consistency of slowly climbing them over time. And then and only then, depending on their goals and how far away they are from them, would we use a temporary deficit in a strategic way without staying there too long so that they don't metabolically re-down, regulate, or adapt. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes when she talks, I just like, I kind of did the day out. Only sometimes. <laughs> you can quiz me on what you said. Uh, well, okay, so I did talk a little bit about a reverse, but do you want to talk about the process of a reverse and how it gets the metabolism to really okay. rev? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so. <laughs> Sorry. I'm back. I'm back. Well, I was you, actually well, here the whole time. What were you daydreaming about? I don't, I don't know. know. See, so, okay. Honestly, this is what I daydream about. This hair right here, and I get another one on this side, drives me insane because I don't like hair on my neck. Oh, that's And so funny. I'll constantly do this. So if you see me doing this, it's because I'm getting that hair off my neck. That's and basically what I'm doing because we're sitting here looking at ourselves talking and you can't help but be like, dang it, that hair on my neck is really bugging me. We had a meeting in the sun right before this and we were sweating. Yeah. And I didn't brush my hair before we got on here, so it looks gross. Sorry. It doesn't look gross. She's fine. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the reverse a little bit more. So let's say you come to us, you do your tracking week, we go over all of your numbers, we look at all of your data, and we give you an assignment. It's a starting block. Now, from there, we give you targets, right? We give you a calorie count, an amount of calories that we want you to hit. And within that calorie boundary, there's a certain percentage of protein, carbs, and fat that you have to hit. You can be, it's a little bit of a range. It's within five grams over or under on any. And so like, if you don't hit, like if you don't hit it perfectly, no big deal. Like we give you guys a little bit of flexibility. If you do that for the week, then the next week at your next check-in, your coach looks at all of your numbers, looks at your exercise, looks at where you are, if you're a female, if, where you are in your menstrual cycle. And then if you've hit your targets for the week, then they should be climbing you in calories. Sometimes um, macros will adjust also, depending on where you're at and where you start. It's really individual. Um, but we will do that week over week over week until we get to the top of your reverse. And the top of your reverse happens at different times for different people 
different numbers. I can never say like, you will be at the top of your reverse at 2,300 calories because it's not like that. If it were like that, it would be so easy yeah. and nobody would need a coach because you would just know. So the top of your reverse for anybody is a different number for everybody, I should say. And it could be when you feel like you are absolutely stuffing yourself and you cannot eat anymore or within like a week or two, the scale starts shifting upward regularly. And that's when we know like, okay, we've hit their calorie threshold, the top of the reverse. Let's start talking about a cut. Now, the amazing thing about what happens in a reverse is you are regulating your metabolism. The food that's going in and the food that's coming out is the same day after day. We're not going to jump your... food that's going out? Well, I mean, maybe. Oh, true. <laughs> I mean, that you're digesting, yeah, you're eliminating. Yeah, like if you're only yeah. if you're taking in the same macronutrients yeah. every day, yeah. then you're eliminating the same macronutrients. That's true. Depending Minus on your what needs. you're using. Minus what you're using. <laughs> Sorry, anyways. Guys. She's listening. That's what she's proving. She's not daydreaming. <laughs> so anyway, your metabolism will regulate itself because our bodies are like machines, right? They like to know what's coming. They like to know what's going. And if you're consistent over time, it becomes really efficient. It's just like if you were giving your car gasoline, the same gas, every single time you go to the gas station and fill it up, you're giving it the same thing. You're not giving it diesel one day. You're not giving it, you know, premium. And then the next day, just regular, you're giving it the same thing every day so that it runs most of efficiently all the time. Our bodies are the same way. Mm -hmm. They want to know that. Now, if you're steady and you're able and you're consistent to hit your numbers week over week and you're, we are then able to slowly climb your calories without affecting your metabolism. Your metabolism is able to keep up, able to burn those calories. And then when we get you to the top of your reverse, it's revving. It is working yeah. really hard. It's firing. It is burning through as many calories as it can during the day. And then we're able to put you through a temporary cut that is very prescribed, very specific for you individual, individually. And it's a short amount of time. And when we put you into that deficit, that calorie deficit, we don't take you from 2,500 calories down to 1,000 calories. That is not sustainable. That is not something that is good for your body. Um, it is a slow roll. And we take Not you, as slow as the climb, though. Not as slow as the climb, no. In fact, because we don't want you to be in a deficit. If your, if your um, maintenance numbers, let's say, are at 2,500 calories, and you're not gaining weight at 2,500 calories, and then we take you into like a three, 400 calorie cut, you may or may not notice a difference. You might feel amazing at mm -hmm. that very first cut just because you're not having to work so hard to take in so much food. A lot of times our clients are like, I literally cannot eat any more food at the top of the reverse. And we're like, great, let's take you through a cut. Um, and that's when the magic happens. So a lot of people will end up losing weight on the reverse, not everybody. Our goal for the reverse is to get your metabolism nice and balanced so that it knows what's coming and what's going on a daily basis. That way we can take you through a cut and we can have, I would say like realistic expectations, yeah. right? Go ahead, I heard you. <gasps> No, it's okay. No, it's good. Go ahead. That's a good segue That's into good. the cut. Go ahead. Well, so before we get to the cut, I just want to mention a couple things on the reverse. We did have a question over on the Instagram side that said, how should you be feeling at the top of a reverse? So Haley, I think, touched on this a little bit. It's a little bit different for everybody because the top of the reverse is typically indicated by one of two things. Either one, you even if you're not gaining, if you feel like you're having to force feed yourself, like we might push you a little bit, but if you feel like you're truly having to force feed yourself and you're feeling stuffed, um, then we, we absolutely don't want you to be moving towards a poor relationship with food. Right. And so you just need to communicate that with your coach. I got something to say okay. about that. Okay. <laughs> a lot of times, oftentimes, clients who will come to us who regularly eat a very low calorie diet and we are pushing them to eat more, I find this a lot. They feel like, let, let's just say, for example, um, I am a five foot five female, I weigh 150 pounds, and I come in eating 1,000 calories. Well, I know just off the bat that you're probably in a deficit. Mm -hmm. Let's say I get you to 1,500 calories and you're losing weight like crazy and you're eating 1,500 calories, most likely you're not in a surplus at 1,500 calories. No. Most likely. Some people would be like, I am stuffing myself. I literally cannot eat anymore. And as a coach, it is my job to really assess that, right? So is it that you can't? 
eat anymore or is it that you're only eating within like this these five hours during the day should we maybe start eating a little bit earlier in the morning should we look at what you're eating and say oh my gosh you're eating like five pounds of cucumbers like that's a huge volume of food with very low calories let's see if we can mix this up a little bit because what we really want is we want you to be fueling your body properly yeah. for the amount of exertion that you are doing on a daily basis if that's 1500 calories maybe it is most likely if you're 5'5", 150 pounds, 1500 calories is probably still a little bit of a deficit. And a true maintenance and a true surplus is not just feeling stuffed. No. It's not. I mean, honestly, like if I, if I get to a point and if I get to maintenance and I'm feeling stuffed, then I need to adjust something, Yeah. you know? And so maintenance should be like super comfortable. It should be comfortable eating. It should be, um, it shouldn't be hard is what I'm saying. If you're at a point and you're still pretty low calorie and you're like, I'm stuffing myself. I want you to reevaluate a few things. Like, are you scared to gain weight? A lot of people are really yeah. scared to see the scale go up a little bit and that's totally normal. But let's, let's evaluate that. Like, are you scared of gaining weight? Are you scared of more calories because of gaining weight? Like yeah. that's a real thing it and is. it's okay. And your coach wants to work with you. But like, if your goal is to have a fast burning metabolism, if you want body composition changes, then you have to trust the process and allow your coach to push you beyond your comfort zone a little bit. We have tons of tools, yeah. tips, tricks on how to kind of get beyond that. And also like if you're not um, a very active person, if you're a little bit more sedentary, which is fine, um, just increasing your movement a little bit will help you to then want more food. Yeah. So anyway, just and a little <clears throat> caveat because a lot of people come in under eating and then they get a few hundred calories higher and they're like, I'm stuffed, I'm done, I'm ready for a cut. And it's like, hmm. Like it, we see it a yeah. lot. And we would be doing a disservice yeah. if we put you through a cut when you're already at a deficit. And one thing that I love, and it happens so often, is that we'll have a client who is under eating most of the time. We get them to start fueling their body consistently. They start climbing. They're afraid to climb. But then we can see that mental shift happen a little bit. And then they start feeling hungrier because yeah. their metabolism is really starting to fire more. And then, I mean, I've seen this time and time again where maybe a client's eating around 1,000 calories when they start and they get to that 14, 1,500 mark and they're like, wow, this is a lot of food. And I'm like, okay. we got to push let's, through. Like, let's can push do through it. this. Yeah. And then they'll get hungrier and hungrier. Pretty soon they're at 2,200 calories and they're like, what? And then they're like, I love this food. Like, yeah. I feel good. I'm sleeping better. My energy is higher. They naturally feel more hormonally balanced or maybe their labs are even showing them that. We see that all the time. And it's so satisfying. It ha starts right here. It does. And honestly, so much of it is trusting the process. Because yeah. when you can start to let go of that a little bit, something shifts. Yeah. Because you can't fight the plan. Like, you no. can't. And so, that I mean, that's a huge part of what we do is just work on that component of it with our mm -hmm. clients. Is like, you can do this. Yeah. It's all about the consistency, having mm -hmm. tools to be consistent making habits through discipline, like it happens. And we will talk about that. But I do want to go back to the question really fast because the question was, how should you be feeling at the top of a reverse? So we talked about one of the two things that can oftentimes happen. So the first one being you just feel super stuffed, but we're going to evaluate, like, are you truly stuffed? Can we shift what you're eating, especially if you're not gaining? Because if you're not gaining, because we like to get to – we like to figure out about what maintenance would be and we like to push a little bit past that just to see just so if we, we can start yeah. upregulating that metabolism even more. If you're there, um, then we might decide to cut you if you truly are uncomfortable. The other thing is, is if you start slightly gaining and it doesn't come back down. Spikes are totally normal here and there. So we're gonna look, we're gonna step back and look at the 30,000 foot view. And a weight graph, if a goal is, is fat loss, is going to oftentimes look like this with the overall arching theme down with spikes along the way. But if you start to slowly spike and it doesn't come back down and we've been working through it, then we, it's time to likely cut. We're going to make sure you're at a good place in life. Are you going on vacation? Do you have any big things coming up? Because adhering to your numbers in a cut 
is well all the time oh, yeah. is important until you're in maintenance it's you don't have to track with that specificity forever but in this process of retraining your metabolism it's really important that you commit to tracking with specificity but when i when i am at the top of my reverse first of all i've got more energy than i know what to do with yeah i feel incredible in the gym i feel super strong i feel like i can start my day at the break yep. of dawn and and go all night i just i feel super all energized all night long oh, all, all night, night. <laughs> wow i don't think that's what that song's no, about no no i don't think it's about that either <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> but really like if you're asking like how do you feel yes i feel full like i'm eating a lot of food i feel full but man i have energy and i feel great yeah and i and i like that i love it yeah we did get a question ahead of time and i think we kind of already answered this but i'll be a little bit more specific and that is how many weeks should I plan to be in my reverse before I'm in my cut? It, it's so hard to know, but we'll give you some examples. Um, it really how, is different for everybody. Yeah, like it, how, how bad do you want to reach your goals? How consistent are you willing to be? How focused can you be? Like, where, where are did you? you start? Yeah, where are you in life right now? Like, is this something that you can give 100% effort to? Because that'll get you to your goal faster. Yeah, the more consistent you are, the... Um, the higher the chance that we're going to be able to climb you week over week. There are some times we might have you do a repeat that has nothing to do with your consistency, um, but it really depends on where you start, how active you are, how consistent you are. I will give a couple examples though, um, because I know people are like, well, yeah, I hear that, but, um, and so let's say, let's say I have, um, we keep using females. We work with males all the time too. I, but we, we do have more female clients than we have male clients. And it's just easier to speak to that. I think because goals are oftentimes a little bit different for men and we're um, females. Yeah. <laughs> um, those are my pronouns. She, her. So I'm sorry. We, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's say that we have a client come in and they're, their average calorie consumption when they come to us is around a thousand calories. Let's say they're a moderately active female um, and we're really working with them. They're, one of their primary goals is fat loss, increased energy, improved sleep, better hormone balance. So let's say we start them there and they can be super consistent. So our goal, and it, once again, it, it's so hard to, to speak to because everybody is so different in terms of how they're responding, how consistent we've set all And how things. high they can climb. And how, yeah, how, everybody's thresh, threshold is a little bit different. But let's just say that we can climb them anywhere from 75 to 125 client, uh, calories week over okay. week while shifting their macros. Um, and let's say that we can get that client up to around 2,000 calories and maybe they only have one or two repeats in there, that's going to be roughly a 10 week reverse. And so that's going to be roughly two and a half months in their initial reverse followed then depending on their goals, depending on all the things we've talked about, followed by their cut. And then in a cut, it's really important we don't just leave somebody in a cut. Sorry, I'm going back and forth between Instagram and Facebook. So if my eyes keep doing this, it's this like is a tennis, why. tennis match. Um, and then in the cut, that's going to go a little bit faster than the reverse. And we're going to talk about the cut here in just a minute. But then after that, we're going to climb our clients strategically back up either to maintenance or if they're really far away from their goal. I mean, we have some clients that come to us really looking to shed over 100 pounds and they do it. Like, it's amazing yeah. if they're consistent. And so then we would then take them, we can either reverse them back to maintenance and give them a more flexible plan, a sustainable plan, have them um, keep their results. I mean, it's so cool to get to see clients come back and be like, it's been a year and I still feel amazing. Um, or we have them repeat that process as many times as we need to until we get them to their goal. And so I hope that gives you a tangible, that's just one example. It's different for everybody. I have yeah. some clients I can climb really high. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and it's so exciting to get to see that. Um, I have a male client that we've, you know, we've gotten at roughly like 6,000 calories a day. And like he is a high performer and he runs and you know, all the things. And so it just really, it's a lot of calories, it's a lot of calories, a lot of calories. <laughs> But his mile time has like incredibly improved. His composition has incredibly improved. His strength, his performance, all the things, all while shedding fat and preserving muscle. So it's just super fun. Um, sorry, Haley's like a busy lady over here today. She's getting all sorts of things coming in. Sometimes unpopular. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've talked about why macros. We've talked about how they make a difference. We've talked about the importance of having each of the macronutrients and what it does. We've talked about how we use a reverse process, how a stagnant assignment is not going to get you long-term continued results. We talked about how we love to start with the reverse. Now let's talk about the cut a little bit. Let's talk about the cut because everybody wants to cut. Everybody wants to cut. And you know what, you guys? I actually like the reverse a whole lot more Way more. more. The cut. Way more. And I have clients that actually have more... It's really, everybody's different. Yes, like the cut usually yields the most aggressive results, but I have some of my clients that actually have their most aggressive shifts on their on their climbs, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Every, yeah. bo every, every body, body is, is so different. different. Yeah, and it's really fun because you get to know your clients. Like I had one client that's now graduated. Um, she would lose in her reverse every single week. We'd hit the top of every of her reverse and she'd go through a cut and she wouldn't lose a pound in her cut. But the second we started climbing her back up, her body's like, Oh, I know what to do. Yeah. And would start shedding weight anyway. But I also have clients who don't lose a single pound in their reverse. And as soon as we get them into a cut, patience. yeah, their body just is like, okay, we're going to get rid of all this. So yeah. the cut is very, very individual. Depending on how high we're able to get you in your reverse will depend on what your cut looks like oftentimes. And, um, I love coaching my clients through a cut because most of the time they're really excited to get there. Yeah. Um, and I will say that our thoughts inform our decisions. So, and what I mean is I think that this whole, like being on a macro plan, being on a nutrition plan is really mental. And we see it with our clients all the time. If you come in and you have a negative attitude, um, oftentimes the results come a little bit more difficultly for those people. As soon as the mind shifts and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And these are my goals and I'm going to work and I'm going to do it. And I'm willing to put forth the effort. Then all of a sudden their bodies respond. Our bodies respond to our brains. Like this connection between our brain and our body is a lot so more complicated and more powerful than we give it credit. And so if we can be in alignment, like we've made a decision, we we're in this plan, we're doing this process let's feel the process, you know, like become, I don't know, become part of it, be excited about it. And when that happens, then, then I feel like the results come faster. That's a side note. That has nothing to do with the cut. Actually it does. You but. Need, it, speaking kind words to yourself, you guys, oh my gosh, like it's you so are important. capable, you are yeah. kind, you are powerful. Like it, yeah. we all have, we, in my opinion, we were all blessed with certain gifts. And if we can figure out like what those are and start our day with gratitude, spread kindness like have joy and light and love come from our hearts. Like my yeah. goodness. We don't just say it cause it sounds nice, no. but it actually has like a physical impact on your body and brain and brain. And so and like, health. let's like, just, <laughs> let's just like be real. Like <clears throat> just be nice to yourself. So let's go into the cut. <laughs> You're beautiful, Betty. Oh, thanks. You're real smart. <laughs> thanks. You have lots of really smart things and, to say. And find a friend that will be your hype girl because yeah. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can just gush over each other yeah. all day long. But yeah. anyway, um, so let's talk about the cut. Like I said, the cut is not taking you from 2,500 calories down to 1,000 calories and leaving you there. That's not, what, that's not how we do it. It's really specific depending on how high you get, depending on your goals, and a plethora of other things will determine. Ooh, that's a good word. That is a good word. I like that word. It will determine what your cut looks like. I have some clients who... Um, who will cut for, you know, two or three weeks before we start climbing them back out. I have other clients who will cut for five weeks before we start climbing back out. It's this communication that you have between your client and your coach about how are you feeling, you know? And I have a lot of clients who will be like, I'd really like to try this in the cut. I want to, you know, I'm going to try a new workout routine or I want to try, you know, I want to keep my protein really high. And like, that's all stuff that we talk about and that we work through during the cut. So, and some clients have, no idea, and that's okay because that's totally. why we're there. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And so a couple of questions we get about the cut are, okay, when I am in a cut, should I stop exercising? And our answer is always no. no. We don't ever want to stop moving our bodies. In fact, you get the most bang for your buck when you're in a deficit, especially if it's prescribed, if you're coached through it, if you continue moving your body, right? It's so a whole calories in, calories out. If we're reducing calories that you are taking in and you are burning more calories because you continue to exercise, then you'll reach your goals faster if your goals are fat loss. So 
That's one question that we get a lot. So when you're in your cut, your body's used to all of these calories coming in on a daily basis, and we're gonna reduce those by chunks over time. In your body, if you have been consistent, will continue to burn high calories at a high rate, even though you're giving it less fuel because it's adapted, right? It's the metabolic adaptation only. It's the good kind of metabolic adaptation. You're at the top of your reverse. You're fueling your body with a lot of calories, a lot of fuel, and it's working. So then we're going to cut back a little bit. Your body's still working. And as long as we don't keep you in the cut too long, your body will not downregulate your metabolism. And hopefully, like as we climb you back out, your body just continues on this cycle. It's like charge, 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 charge. And so, so when you're in the cut, the keys to a cut are consistency. Like if you and the reverse, yeah, and the reverse. Actually, just like on any macro plan, yeah. those that's the key. But if you go into a cut and you're like, oh, I'm headed on vacation, and this happens, yeah, be like, all right, let's do it. Let's start your cut. And they're like, oh, I'm on vacation, you know, or we'll be a week into it. And they're like, I'm going to. Vacate, I'm going to Hawaii for the next week and a half. And I'm like, why are we doing your cut if you're going to Hawaii, you know? And, um, or some people are like, you know, I would really like to get into my cut, you know, before July 4th. And I'm like, uh, I can, you know, like all of this information needs to be told to your coach before we get you into a cut and before we get close so that we, cause we can adjust things. You can hang out in maintenance forever, yeah. you know, before we put you through a cut. So if the timing is not right, no big deal. Don't feel like you're on this hamster wheel yeah. and you can't get off because you're in this process. It's not like that. Like if we need to hang out at a certain calorie count for a week or two weeks or three weeks or however long, like that's okay. Like we're in it for the long run. Yeah. We're not, we're 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 marathoners. We are marathoners. We're marathoners. Although I do like a good sprint. But. Yeah, but you know what? So, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and to to speak a little bit specifically about the cut. Once again, it does it. It really depends, but we're going to want a big enough drop that it makes an impact. So, Which is why we push you to get higher in your reverse. And we're going to want several drops. And so, whereas in the reverse, we're climbing anywhere between typically 75 to 125 calories week over week, if you're consistent, <laughs> then in a cut, we might drop somewhere like 300 calories, or that might, that might have a little bit bigger window. And then we're going to see how your body um, is reacting, how your energy levels are, but just know, obviously, we don't want to hold somebody in a cut for too long. We've talked a lot about that. We don't want metabolic adaptation. But your body will use its reserves to function. And so we're going to drop you. Might have you repeat some weeks in there. There's several factors that will dictate that. That doesn't mean that you're being inconsistent or anything. It all has to do with your trending and all of those things. We would love to get at least, well, it depends. Somewhere between <laughs> two and four drops. Um, and it, it's really going to depend on how you're feeling, how you're sleeping, but your body, I mean, you look at the people that go on survivor, like they're out there, what, 30 days. And sometimes with like very little to anything, their body is utilizing its fat stores. Now we're not going to be that extreme. We really want to You're not sure. going on survivor no, when not, you sign you're up. you're not at all. <laughs> but just know like some people, like you will feel some hunger because we've now increased your metabolic threshold to be expecting something. I actually love it when I feel a little bit hungry. When yeah. I'm in a cut and I don't feel hungry, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, what's happening? How it, am I not hungry? And there's some really big benefits to that strategic cut standpoint too, from a cellular standpoint, from a cognition standpoint, because it's like a little bit of a forced fast. And so we're not doing anything too extreme. It's for a season. You'll be coached through it. It's, it, it's, it's amazing what can happen when you get your metabolism revving and then you can use that strategically versus somebody holding themselves in a deficit for far too long, damaging their hormone, their natural hormone regulation, damaging their cellular recovery, interrupting their sleep. Like we don't want those things. No. They're bad. Yeah, they are. Get and, them out of here. <laughs> and a lot of times, and you know, I, I think that like, especially like I'm a child of the 80s and the 90s. Like, I remember watching my mom. And the late 70s. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was I was born in 1979. But anyway. I just had to throw that in. Well, I tell my kids all the time. They'll, something will come up, and I was like, I, I was born in the 1900s, you guys. Yeah. And they're like, Mom. <laughs> Look at me, ancient. Anyway, um, I think that, like, growing up in those years, like, I remember Suzanne Summers, and I remember all, like, the, the stuff that, like, was – advertised yeah. to our moms, you know? And I think that a lot of it was this like really unhealthy, like 
um, fat free and yeah. dieting culture that has then like kind of, you know, I feel like we were subjects to it because of our, because of our parents. And I think that it's, it's scary for me when I think about somebody, somebody, some geek off the street who's just like, I'm going to put myself through a calorie deficit. And I'm like, Oh, like that makes me yeah. really nervous for them because like there really is a, a healthy way to do it. Yeah. And then there's a way that is not healthy. And we don't want anybody to, um, to think that like, okay, I'm going to go in a calorie deficit and just do it myself. Like if you are our client and you graduate or you are in maintenance, like that is something that we will actually like yeah. walk you through and take you step by step, educate you before we send you out on your own because we don't want anybody to, you know, harm themselves. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing that goes with that, and this was actually a question that we received. Hi, Scouty. <laughs> My little guy just came in. Um, is does the foods that I eat when following macros, as long as I'm hitting my macros, matter? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, like, and we're going to talk about that. Can a person have progress by simply eating what they already are eating, not changing anything but hitting their numbers? Yes. Like, we see it all the time. People come in, they don't necessarily want to change the foods they eat, but they change the quantity of those foods. They hit their macros. They, they have aesthetic changes. They have success. That's fantastic. However, um, <laughs> if you are willing and open to learning more about the effect of inflammatory foods on your diet, or on your body, on your longevity, then if you can couple hitting your macros with also just slowly and methodically shifting out some of those inflammatory foods with less inflammatory options, not only will your progress be more aggressive, but you will just be a healthier, happier, longer living human. Mm -hmm. And so I think the biggest things that we can do is like minimizing things like soda, like sugary drinks, even fruit juices, like just eliminating sugary drinks, eliminating processed foods, eliminating seed oils. Like seed oils are horrendous and they're in so many of our foods. I'm talking about things like vegetable oil and canola oil. They're extremely inflammatory. And if you can just... And most of the time they're rancid on the shelf. Yeah. Like they... It's just, it's kind of gross. If you could just remove seed oils and replace them with things like avocado oil, coconut oil, olive oil. Those are going to be healthy, supportive fats that actually support your brain, support your hormones, um, other healthy fats, nuts in moderation. They add up fast. Uh, avocados, um, good um, animal proteins with healthy fats. Like all of those things really can make a difference and so but we're not saying don't eat like yeah. seeds and um like chia seeds or hemp seeds or sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds seeds alone are really good for you they're full of fiber and yeah. um, they are loaded with fat uh, so just be careful make sure that you're tracking it but it's when they extract the oils from those seeds and then they process it and oftentimes it sits on shelves forever and they become rancid and then we still cook with them because they don't taste any different but that chemical effect of what is happening to the oil is like it's gnarly so yeah it's just easier to stay away from it if you can it is and that's why like one of the things that we like to believe kind of sets us apart because there's a lot of different programs out there some are really good but yes primarily we're working with our clients on nutrition and like really dialing that in and creating a sustainable plan that you can make your lifestyle and that you can achieve your goals and maintain them like that's that's the bottom line however we have the ability and we have some really great information um, to help you improve your health, your cognition, your, you know, reduction of the chance of any form of disease, all of those things. And so we wouldn't be doing our clients or ourselves a service if we didn't share those things. And so yeah. really learning about inflammatory foods, really learning about um, supporting a healthy brain, improving your sleep hygiene, um, how to have the best cellular shirt. Like all of those things are really important. And we love that we have this platform to be able to educate on some of those other areas too, that we've spent our lives learning about and, and implementing and tr continually trying to improve. Are we perfect? No. <laughs> Do we still choose to eat inflammatory foods sometimes? Yeah, yes. Sometimes like, it's worth it. Sometimes it's worth it. But, but having the knowledge, like knowledge is power. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. So we've talked about the reverse. We've talked about the cut. Now <clears throat> we don't just leave our clients in a cut. Like Emmy said earlier, um, it, the cut is prescribed. It is super specific to each individual person. And then once we are done, we start climbing you. What people don't realize is often when we're climbing out of the cut, they think they're done. They're like, oh, the, yeah. the cut, that's it, the end of the cut. Well, you're only, you're only finished with the cut until we get you to your metabolic base, right? Yeah your base metabolic rate and then your cut is over with so oftentimes we'll take you into a cut the deficit will be you know the actual prescribed chunking of the cut is a few weeks but then the climb out of the cut you're still um, technically in a deficit until we get you out of that deficit so then we like to move people into maintenance either at that point or we, again like Amy said we can go through the process of reversing back up and cutting again as many times as necessary depending on the goal that you have so yeah. And maintenance is like gravy because now you've like really learned how to fuel your body and your brain, the foods that you enjoy. You have an idea of what your plate's going to look like. Yeah. A lot of our clients still choose to track with specificity because they love that. They love how they feel. They like knowing, having a plan. They like all those well, things. And if you have a goal, like honestly, like what are the steps to get you to your goal? If yeah. your goal is you know, to increase muscle. Well, then how do you know if you're doing it, if you're not tracking? Yeah. So sometimes, you know, when I'm in maintenance, I still track. There may be days when I'm like, don't track a meal because I don't know, I, I get tired or whatever. Or it's a complicated meal or whatever it looks like for you. But you know, it's just things may be a little bit loose and maintenance isn't a specific number. It's a range. Yeah. You know, we don't, we're not pinholing you to one thing. It, it, it's a range. And so like if you sit at the top of your maintenance range, um, that's one thing. If you're at the bottom of your maintenance range, that's another, it, it may look different. You know, there's a few hundred calories to kind of mess with in there. The beauty is, is once you get to maintenance, you should have a much more flexible metabolism because you've retrained your metabolism to really understand how to utilize the fuel that it's been given. And you should be able to have higher endurance, higher energy, improved sleep, improved hormone function, and then you can sustain those things. And um, and then we're here if you ever have questions or anything like that. And so yeah. it's just it's just super cool. And our community is just amazing, Man, it's so amazing, yeah. it's so fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. So um, if you guys have questions, as always, please reach out. We are running our summer special right now for one more week. Super duper <clears throat> summer spectacular. Yeah, it's <laughs> sizzling. <Stupendous>. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, lots of superlatives we can I use. I tell you. If you sign up solo, then you will be oh. gifted. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> gifted a free bottle of Mighty Metabolism. You absolutely don't have to have take Mighty Metabolism to have success on our plan. You don't have to be on our plan to take Mighty Metabolism, but they complement each other so well. We love Mighty Metabolism. It's one of my favorite supplements. It is. And it's not just because I made it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and so you would receive a free bottle if you sign up with a friend um, or family member or whomever. Not only do you both get a bottle of free Mighty Metabolism, but you also each get $50 off your first month of coaching. We have a fantastic group of coaches. Oh, man. There's, it's always a good time to start, but right now, I mean, gosh, just feel how, just think about how much better you could feel in a week, a month, three months. Like, there, and there's always going to be a reason why to wait, but there doesn't have to be. No. Like, so if it's you never have, a great time, you know, but it's always the time. It's always the time. You can go to our website, macromavens.life. Click on the hop, hop on, on board, board button. <laughs> and then it doesn't commit you to anything, but it does let one of our coaches reach out, answer questions, see if we're a good fit and get you started. Yep. So, Do it today. <laughs> why wait? Why wait? Why wait? And we have, man, we just, we have good stuff. And so, there is good stuff coming. Um, let's not get into it. Otherwise, yeah. we'll, we'll talk for another hour. But lots of good stuff coming, you guys. Summer is here. Yeah. It is gorgeous. And we are just excited to... We're just excited to be here. We are. Excited yeah. to partner with you. So hop on board. Be our friend. <laughs> Join our family. Join Do our it. family. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us yep. today. Um, we, we love getting to jump on here. We love the engagement. And um, we hope you have a fantastic yeah. week. Have a great week. Bye, guys. Bye guys.